Hello everybody, I'm Spark249, welcome to episode 6 of Let's Play Spyro Year of the Dragon. Now, we're going to start off this episode by having a little chat with Mr. Moneybags. I'm getting paid a fortune to keep Sheila the Kangaroo locked up. <laughs> the pesky animal must have been causing a lot of trouble for that poor sorceress. I suppose I could accidentally let the kangaroo escape if you were to pay me, say, a small fee. I'm going to hurt him a lot. 300 gems to free the first of Spyro's companions in this game, Sheila the Kangaroo. Ah, Spyro, I love your sweet naivete. Your kind-hearted nature might be your downfall someday, but for the time being, it's making me rich. I'm going to hurt him. So anyway, here's the cutscene where we free Sheila. No hard feelings. I'll let the cutscene play out, and then I'll explain what this all means. Uh, <laughs> I hope you appreciate this favor I'm doing in letting you out. As good of you, mate. No hard feelings, eh? Right. After all, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> he deserved that and more. I reckon you'd be one of them dragons then. Yeah, named Spyro. Never thought I'd see one. You dragons used to rule this entire world, you know. Then all of a sudden you left. Poof. Dragons used to live here? Didn't you know? They say it was over a thousand years ago, I think. And they just And we left. still have records yeah. of this. And the weird thing is, after they left, all the magic in the world just sort of went with them. I mean, they say this world used to have magic coming out the wazoo. Flying ships, singing forests, wishing stones, you name it. But when the dragons left, it all just dried up. Is that why some of the portals don't work? Yeah, I was literally about to say that. to fade out too, one by one. Well, I gotta get back home and do some damage control. Come visit any time you like. So anyway, yes, um, that's the first companion, she's the kangaroo, and she explains why half the portals are inactive and they require the magic of the dragon eggs to unlock them. Now this level is a bit different. Sheila's Alp. You also notice that this is this Sheila sign. This means that all the challenge portals locked with a picture of Sheila on the outside are now unlocked. So if we wanted to, we could now return to Sunny Villa and um, Seashell Shore and complete them. Anyway, you'll notice something strange about entering this level. Thanks again, Spyro. Now I have to find out what that nasty sorceress has done to my home while I was locked up. Now, you may have noticed Spyro Hi, looks a bit Sheila. different. While you are gone, a bunch of Rhinox kicked us out of our houses. It's okay, though. Bobby, Pete and I are working on a clever plan to take them back. Let's ignore the goats. They're not the most intelligent things in the world. Anyway, you'll notice we're now playing as Sheila the Kangaroo. Now, the controls are quite a bit different when you're playing as one of Spyro's companions. Uh, you move around in this little weird hop fashion. If you jump, you can double jump. You cannot glide. But if you hit jump just after you hit the floor, you'll do this super high jump. Sheila also only has one attack. Both square and circle trigger it. Oh, sorry, she has two attacks. Uh, she's got this kick, triggered by either square or circle, and if you try and do a head bash, she'll do this foot stop. Anyway, let's move on. Now, the thing about Sheila's area is that the developers like to put little edges everywhere, which you need to reach with Sheila's super jump. And yeah, so unless you know where they all are exactly, it might be a tad difficult to grab everything on your first attempt. But I know where it all is, so we ought to be fine. Anyway, there's three eggs to get in this level, and each of them are for getting one of these goats back to their house. Ah, uh, home at last. Here, I was saving this to make an omelette, but I think you deserve it more. You horrible, horrible goat. You're going to eat this poor baby dragon, Ruby. Who... Yeah, she's one of the ones who can fly. Congratulations! Anyway, there's some gems up here. I believe that's in this entire area cleared out, so into the cave we go. Now, these moose, yak, whatever they are, just kick them as they charge at you and you'll be absolutely fine. Don't forget to break these rocks because they all contain gems. And this might take a tad bit of timing. And then we have all those places and another metal crate. Which you can use Sheila's footstomp to open. 
seeing as they're the ones with the giant targets on the top. Okay, so moving on, you'll see another Rhinoc over here. So, just give him a good friendly kick in the face, and you'll be able to let, allow the second ghost to travel to them. Behind here, you'll find two head bash crates. So, grab all the gems out of here. As you can see, we're, this level isn't massively long. Seeing as... Oh yeah, there's one more thing to do. To let this guy into his house, you're going to need to break that rock that's preventing him from getting in. It's also possible to get yourself trapped behind him, so be careful. Let's play a joke. Take this egg and smash it on Billy's house, okay? I need to get him back for the last time he butted me off the cliff. You're even worse than the other one. You wanted me to literally shatter the egg of a baby dragon on someone else's house. Hello, Jenny. I just saved you from a horrible, horrible fate. And you're doing the chicken dance for some reason. That was funny when the joke was related to chickens. Not so much on the repeat. Okay, so, gem. Moose. Now there's actually enemy generators here. So what you're going to want to do is you don't necessarily need to talk to him. But if you talk to Bobby, this will happen. There'll be no stopping them unless we can smash the huts. The huts are too big to smash for your kick attacks, though. Try using your stomp attack to smash them instead. I'll confuse them with taunting while you stomp the huts, okay? You remember how to stomp, don't you? Just jump, then press the triangle button in the air. The only reason I talk to him is because it triggers you his taunting. Stomp, don't you? Just jump, then... Okay, you repeated that twice. Because I wanted to trigger his taunting. He just stands here and makes stupid noises. It has absolutely no effect. Anyway, you want to get above these houses and destroy them all. They will respawn the Rhinox. So you're going to have to destroy all of these. But once you've... Uh... Or maybe they don't respawn. I can't remember if they actually function as enemy generators or not. Maybe I'm completely lying about that. But once you've done that, just kick all of the Rhinox to death. Pick up all these gems and we're nearly there. Also notice that Sparks has turned traitor and is now following Sheila. But as you can see, this changes the dynamic of how you would play the level quite a lot. Seeing as I can't charge, it does make me feel a lot slower when I'm playing as any of the other characters. Okay, so some up here, along with an extra life. No! Okay, the momentum made me fall off the edge there, so... Hopefully all the Rhinox didn't respawn. Of course they did. Right, they don't actually have their gems anymore though, so you don't need to fight them. Right, let's regain that life I foolishly lost, and... Okay, some of them did actually fall off the edge then. Okay, so I killed you. Ow! Horrible, horrible, Rhinoc. Kill the duck to get back some... Um, HP. Oh, I do, I do need to kill them because I need to let Bobby get to his house. So, I'll just quickly destroy all these. And we are nearly done with this level. Oh, two in one kick. There we go, all of them are dead, I think. Yes, Bobby's off to his house. Okay, so I'm actually going to ignore Bobby for a minute because there's some more gems up here. In this strange little area. Okay, so with a bit of hopping around. And up here to get the head bash crate. As you can see, Gila can, she, Sheila can jump rig ridiculously high. And this should be the last set of gems up here, unless there's any next to Bobby's house, which I'm forgetting. Which it seems there is. If you ever forget how to con Be quiet, Zoe. She there explains to you how to check the options. You are kidding. How many am I missing? A single red gem. 
Okay. Why does this happen to me? Literally every single level. Oh, it's right there. Okay, that one was much easier than I was, I was about to say our cut and come back when I find it, but seeing as it was relatively close. Okay, let's get the third egg. Thanks for the help, Sheila. You can have this egg I found in my house. Yay. Nan. Okay, so you're a lot nicer than the other two goats. I'll remember that. Ah, oh, she's so happy. So you'll notice that the NPC who opens up the exit portal does not run through the portal. That's because the companion, in this case Sheila, is the one who will help pull down the balloon. Also, the it feels a little bit odd because Spyro doesn't go through the portal and therefore start gliding. It just sort of cuts to black extremely quickly. Which feels a little bit odd, but oh well. Also, I'm not going to push a button, because Sheila's waiting right here. So you notice they pull down the balloon. Already, sir. Just jump on. So yes, jumping on this balloon now will allow us to either stay here or go to the second homeworld, Midday Gardens. But we're going to be doing that next episode. Yes, we've actually still got one more level to do in this homeworld. Um, although according to the Atlas, he isn't actually in this home world. Uh, aside from backtracking. But, uh, we're going to show, I'm going to show you that next episode. So anyway guys, I'm Spark249. Have fun!